Front row MMA here at Made for the Cage 10 with middleweight standout Leroy Barnes. Leroy, it's been a long time since we've seen you in the cage. How frustrating is it that you know you haven't been able to fight since that last win? Um, yeah, it's quite frustrating. You know, like I, I was told I, I'd possibly be fighting around May, and obviously it's the end of May now, and I'm still not fighting. And it was a good win last time. I've been working hard, and things are looking up. And, I was looking to keep momentum going. Obviously, I'm, I'm quite frustrated about that. So. Now, is there is there any chance that you know? I know you got a lot of followers on Twitter. I know you got a lot of fans. Is there any chance they're going to see you in the cage before the end of the year? Yeah, de they'll definitely see me b before the end of the year. Yeah. And again, I know fighters don't necessarily like to talk about you know opponents, but. Who or what type of opponent are you looking for next? Because I know you, you, you know, you should be in line. You, 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 if you're not in line now, you're one fight away from a Bama title shot. What kind of opponent would you like? Um, there, there was talk of, of Scott Askham. I think Scott Askham would be an awkward fight for me. He's south boy, he's really tall. I'm quite short for a middleweight, being 5'10". But I'd, to be honest, I, I was looking, I'd, I'd have liked to have fought Jack Marshman again. Like, I get on with Jack and we had a close fight and it, it was good. And I had some circumstances that, you know, not making excuses, but stopped me from doing certain things before that camp. Like, I hadn't been doing any wrestling at all. So, I'd, I'd have liked to have uh, tried and changed that fight. But, you know, I had to fight him at his game. And to be honest, I didn't mean, I'd, you know, I didn't mind, to be honest. I, I liked it. It was a great fight. People still talk about it now, like over a year later. I, think, I, so. it's, I still think it's one of the, one of your standout fights on on the Bama card. And again, I've always maintained if it had been five rounds in that fight, could have been a very different end because that third round he was gone and you were coming in. Well, that was it. Like I didn't have that much confidence in, in my cardio, but everyone was saying I've got great cardio, I've got this, and but I didn't have that much confidence. In, so I was starting slow all the time, and I think it was actually you guys. I was listening to one of the podcasts saying I should start a bit faster and. That was something we worked on for a while in the gym. I think the Sutherland fight made us realise that I, I didn't really get into the fight at all that time. So I fought last time uh, in Newcastle nice. and I just came out quick. Yeah. Just wanted to do what I did straight away. So Now, you know, when we spoke to you after that fight in Newcastle, you were saying that you changed up your, you changed up your training a little bit. You'd lost a little bit of mass and picked up a bit more speed. Are you still going that way in training? Is it still? Yeah, definitely. I'm still doing a lot of mobility stuff. I'm still doing a lot, a lot of stretching, a lot of cardio, a lot more running than I used to. I'm trying not to put. It's hard when I'm not fighting because I eat a lot more and my, my strength and conditioning training is slightly different. So I, I tend to put uh, muscle size on quite quite quickly. So it, it, I'm struggling a little bit. I'm a bit heavier than I'd like to be, but I'm nowhere near as heavy as I used to be. So I'm still I'm still keeping it. And, and being an MMA fighter in the UK, let's be honest, it's not a lot of money out there for MMA fighters. You guys don't get paid nearly what you deserve for what you do for the fans. Yeah. You know how hard is it? How hard is, has that been? Sort of on on you not having. Fighters? Fights to bring in that to bring in the cash that you would be making is, is that the hardest part of not fighting? Yeah, that, that's to be honest. I'm, that's probably the most frustrating thing at the moment is that my sponsors don't want to give me as much money unless they're getting seen everywhere. You know, if I've got no fights coming up, I'm doing no interviews. I'm not on any YouTube videos. I'm not doing any any like anything. Yeah, we'll change that. What's that? <laughs> we'll change yeah. that. This will go straight up yeah. on YouTube. And any any VTs for fights, I'm, I'm not doing anything. So my sponsor, I can see they don't want to give me as much money for for no advertisement. I'm not getting any. I'm not getting any paychecks. I'm not getting any win bonuses. You know, and and in the UK, we us guys that fight full time mainly live off sponsors. So obviously, I thought I was going to be fighting in May. It's like now the end of May. I probably won't be fighting now till maybe July, August time. So. Now, we'll move away, move away from Leroy the fight. You're here as a fan tonight. I know your partner, I think, is, works at, we're here with the promotion. What yeah. fights are you looking forward to at here at Made for the Cage? Uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to the uh, Matt Ewan versus Andrew Punching fight. He's going to be a really good good fight. Well, I'm, I'm going to put you on the spot because I know yeah. you, you fought Ewan at Bama. You choked him out. I think it was the second round, second round stoppage. Second round, um, yeah. Who do you pick in this one? Um, it's a hard one to call, yeah. but I, I pick Punching. Like, I've trained with Punching. And I fought Matt Ewing, and Punchin's a lot stronger and a lot more powerful than Matt. Whereas Matt is very, very technical. Yeah. Like when I wrestled him, like he was going like one thing, I'd defend it straight to another, straight to another. Like he was non-stop. He, he, he was like a chess game. He knew what he was doing all along. And uh, but I just kept cool. And I think towards that he was starting to towards the end of the second round where I got the choke, he was starting to gas a bit and he was weakening off. And I think if that happens in this fight, then. 
punching is going to be a lot, lot stronger than it. Now you fought on a made for the cage. The made for the cage eight, seven. It was, yeah. When, when but just I, before you'd signed the, the contract for Bama, did, yeah. Yeah. Um, you know what is it about made for the cage that made a because you were a well-known fighter when yeah. you when you signed. What was it about the made for the cage promotion that made you go? You know what? Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna come step in here. Everything like I knew obviously around that time I'd, I'd started speaking to my now girlfriend that works on a promotion, Seringo. Um, so I, I knew Dale as well through Kurt Warburton, who he used to be close with, who's the promoter, and Scotty. I got on with them really well. They were really good to me. They struck up a good deal with with my manager for the main event against a good opponent, and that's what I needed. I think I got Mickey Burns, who was nine and four at the time. So it was good to, to main event the show just before Christmas, and it is a great show. They look after you, and it's busy down there, and it's a good atmosphere to fight in. So. Leroy, the, the event's about to start, so I know you want to get down to the table. I want to thank you for spending a few minutes with us, and we look forward to seeing you fight again whenever that may be, hopefully thank sooner you. rather than later. Cheers. Thank you. Thank you. Cheers for your time, pal. Oh.